So hello everyone, nice to meet you. My name is Neta and welcome to my little corner of the internet, I guess. So this is my first video and I'm really excited for that. And today I'm going to be making a late 1880s corset by Nora Wah. Um, that appears in Corsets and Crinolines, uh, so let's get to it. Uh, I started off with cording my front panels. For the cording, I used a cotton yarn. Red Threaded has a really good tutorial for how to cord a corset. slight hiccup. I made a mistake. I accidentally made two of the same side, which means both of these are a uh, center right. So this is the center front line and center front seam. Like both of these are center front seam, sorry. And both of these are like would technically go on the right side of your body. So I need to recut this redo this and come back um, with just a center left which would have looked like this again with the whole cording and stuff you can see this cording here and all of the pink fluff is cording as well so I need to remake it, which I think is a little bit of a good thing because I did make both of these. I didn't film anything, so I can film it now. But before I'm going to make a another panel and cord it, uh, which would probably take me around the one hour mark because I'm not the fastest seamstress. I don't sew really quick. Uh, I do want to mend both of these. Uh, these are both uh, need mending. This a little has like some holes in the arms and on the hem because I used another um, fabric for the hem which is much much more lightweight than the actual fleece I used for the actual hoodie. So this needs like some mending as well as this. Uh, this was really poorly made when I really needed a shirt because mine got tea stained. So I made this uh, in high school. So this needs a little bit mending on the armpit part. You can see the hole. So I'm going to do this as a procrastination task because I've been procrastination no, because I've been procrastinating doing these uh, for the past few days as well. So the mistake I explained was making two of the same side. Right now you are watching footage of me procrastinating even more than I put in the clips and I decided to finish my 18th century fantasy pirate shirt of my dreams. And let me tell you, after having it for a few months now, uh, it is wonderful and I love it. I filmed the footage and I thought it would go to waste if I did not put it in. I gathered the shirt by hand and I really really enjoyed it, sewing a lot of it by hand was very very refreshing. So I hope you enjoy some aesthetic footage because this video is
now that I finally uh, decided that it's enough procrastination, I am pinning my pattern of the center front on the straight of grain. At this point, I think I already cut most of the corset, I think. I didn't work on this corset in a very sensical order. At this point, I was cutting out the fashion fabric. The fashion fabric doesn't need to be the exact same size as the base layer. The reason for that is that the cording process distorts the fashion layer due to the nature of the cord itself. The fashion layer goes over the cord, meaning it needs more fabric to go over it than the actual base layer of the corset. These panels only have a small amount of cording, but the general rule is that the more cording you have in a corset, the more fabric or fashion fabric that is, you will need per panel. Red Threaded has a wonderful cording tutorial, so I really highly suggest that you watch that tutorial and not me trying to explain that. I sewed the channels on the front panel um, without the cording, meaning I had to thread the cording afterwards, after the channels were sewn, which was not fun. And I did use a blunt tapestry needle for that. And I basically threaded it through the channels that were created by sewing. Now I'm cutting the rest of the pattern pieces from the fashion fabric as well as the denim that I used. I am pinning the center front line, making sure to match both of the pattern lines on both sides of the pieces.
for inserting the basque, the loop side, I am basically marking where the loops are before I sew them and just not sew where they are, basically leaving myself some room for them to slide through while I insert the busk. I pinned the busk in place because I don't have those clips, like claw clips, and basting it in place. If I had those claw clips, I think I would have used those. You could maybe use like office clips, but I, they're very strong and I just don't want to use them on my machine because it is a home machine. While pinning this, I probably nicked myself twice at least. Sewing in the busk is pretty easy, you do have to go slowly, but if you use any type of foot that is open on one side that allows you to sew close to edges, it will be much much easier. So I am inserting the busk that way, again this is by no means a tutorial. It is important to go slowly while you're inserting the busk because you can break a needle over the busk because it's a very hard piece of metal and you can hurt yourself. In order to mark where the knobs should be, I'm laying the pieces flush against each other, lining them up and marking through the loops where the knobs should go. I am using a watercolor pencil, which you might not want to do in the future. Do what I say, not what I do. After I marked all of the knobs, I go in with an awl and pierce through the fabric where I marked, creating holes without ruining the fabric and tearing it. After I insert the knobs and make sure it is correct, I go in and sew it in place. I did not baste this part because the knobs hold it in place. I did make sure, however, that it is folded correctly. After sewing in the busk, I sewed in the boning layer, boning layers, no, the boning channels to the center front panel. Now, because I did not use a spoon busk, but a straight busk, I did mod modify the placement of the center front boning channels a little bit 
but I kept it between being completely straight and curved like it was in the original corset. This was not the right choice for boning channel fabric wise. I don't think this corset was well constructed whatsoever. In order to insert the eyelets, I opened up the eyelets with an awl. I could have used a hole punch. Actually, I should have used a hole punch, but I didn't think of it. Uh, so I used the, the awl instead. So I opened up the eyelets, inserting four millimeter wide eyelets into the holes and using the eyelet kit that came like in the first kit that I bought and by the kit I mean the little clamp that you can use in order to close up your eyelets. I used a little plier thing, I'm not sure what its name is, to help me close up the eyelets. I didn't want to do it with a hammer because it's very noisy and I live in an apartment building with very thin walls and I didn't want to disturb my neighbors. 
as well as just convenience sake. And I do not have an eyelet punch, so that's why I chose to just use the plier. So after sewing on the top bias binding and felling it down, I inserted the bones. In order to insert the bones, you need to measure them against your channel, making them approximately a half to three quarters of an inch shorter than the channel itself. First of all, because it needs a little bit of wiggle room and so it won't poke at the bias binding so i made them a little bit shorter than my actual channels so i can also sew the channels closed i measured them cut them with pliers and filed them with a nail file after that i inserted them into the channels some of them were a little snug some of them were a little looser i still am working on my boning channels they're not perfect, they were very not perfect in this project, but hopefully my next corset will be much better. So I pinned on the bias binding on the top edge and sewed it down on one end uh, by machine. The other hand is folded over and felled with whip stitches by hand. Uh, you can do it by machine. The fabric was just so thick, I did not want to feed it through my machine at this point. Or I wanted to feed it as little as possible. And finally, the last step was sewing on the bottom bias binding. Now, after I think sewing on the top bias binding, I chucked the corset into my in progress pile and did not touch it for a while. And I used up the previous bias binding that I made for it. So I had to make a new one out of similarly thick white fabric is it the best choice? Absolutely not. Is it what I had? Yes. I just wanted to finish this project already and I was sick and tired of looking at this pile of corset. So I made a different bias binding and used it up.